Hello YouTube, just going to make a quick video here showing uh, the new TRIAC based variable heating mantle control for um, laboratory use or any other non, -in or sorry, any other resistive load will work on this. Um, you can modify it to work on an inductive load such as a motor, but to keep it simple for you guys that want to make your own heating mantles and need to build your own power supply or temperature controller or whatever you want to call it um, this is going to be a, a brief video not really a how to if you guys show any interest in this I'll go more into depth in it but for now I just wanted to show you what I've done and the schematic I'm using I have here but I just wanted to show a few things here. So basically, you got your little dial here. The more amps you run, the hotter it is, obviously. Uh, one fault with this thing to say right now is it's got a dropout current of about one amp. So below one amp, it completely shuts off itself. When you turn it back up, it's not gonna fire up. When it does, it's gonna jump to like five amps and you're gonna wanna turn it down right away. As you can see when I'm slowly bringing it up here, it jumps and you're going to want to bring it back down to wherever you want to set it. So that's just a warning for any of you guys that want to make this. Um, this is probably because I'm using a 16 amp rated triac. If you doubled up a few 5 amp or 3 amp rated triacs, you would have better results. But I wanted this thing to be durable, last a long time, be able to run cool, not hot. So, basically, if you've seen my other videos, you know how to make these heating mantles. Uh, so you build yourself a heating mantle, find yourself a box. Now, I know most of you, some of you, don't have a lot of electrical experience. But I can tell you right now, this is one of the easiest electrical projects um, that you could do yourself. It does deal with line voltage, though, so you have to be careful these terminals are live with 120 volts right now you don't want to touch them you're gonna get a shock the whole thing's grounded though for safety um, it's been running about 20 minutes now and it's just getting slightly warm um, but yeah so I'm gonna go over the schematic here and don't panic if you don't know what you're looking at I'm gonna explain it um, so basically what you have if you know anything about alternating current which, if you don't, I recommend you stop right now because there's probably not a hope in hell for you. No offense, but you should start with some smaller electrical projects before going on to something that deals with line voltage. This stuff can kill you. You have to be uh, very careful with it. Basically, so with this circuit here, you got your black wire or your line comes in. It right away goes through a 10 amp fuse for safety. And this one, the fuse is in the back here. So, basically, any schematic is point to point. You just connect the pieces point to point to point to point. And follow it over with a, uh, with a highlighter to make sure you know what you've already done. And you don't do it twice. And you don't miss anything. And then you know you got the whole circuit built. But anyways... So you got your black wire comes in, goes through a fuse, goes through a switch, and goes through the amp meter. So that's basically the black wire comes in, goes through the switch, goes through the fuse, and then through the amp meter. From the other side of the amp meter, according to the circuit here, it goes right to one side of the heating mantle. So it goes directly to one of these prongs right here. From the So then it goes through this wire, around through the heating mantle, and comes back to the other prong. From the other prong, forget this voltmeter here, you don't need it if you don't want it, but from the other prong, it basically goes into a circuit like this, and you just connect the points. Really, there's only uh, five parts that you need for this circuit. Um, you can do it on a breadboard if you wanted to. I did it on a breadboard. Uh, it's probably easier for you to do it just point to point with wiring, um, but basically you got a triac, which is an alternating current switch basically I'm not gonna go into depth this isn't an electrical uh, tutorial this is a quick how-to if anybody's interested for this thing 
But anyway, so you got a triac, which kind of looks like this. And you got your pins 1, 2, and 3 if you're looking at the front of it, which are A1, A2, and G. And I've put on the schematic here A1, A2, and G. Um, the diac here, which has two wires. So the triac has three wires. The diac has two wires. This is a resistor. has two wires. And this is a potentiometer. has has uh, three wires. From As you can see by this, two of them... One leg on the inside and the outside leg are connected, and then the other leg of the resistor comes up to the live side of the circuit. On the neutral side, off the other side of the diac, there's a, this is a 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor, and it goes to the neutral. Uh, A1 of the triac goes to neutral. A2 of the triac goes to line. And that's pretty much it. It's, it's really straightforward. Like I said, this is one of the easiest circuits you can do. Like I said, um, forget this half. You don't need these parts here. This is optional. If you want to run this, if you want to use this to run an AC motor, like with a, a brushed AC motor, uh, you would have to add this. So it would be another 100 ohm resistor, 5 watt rated, and another 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And that would make this circuit work for a motor. If you tried to run it with a motor right now, uh, back feed would come and it would blow up the triac every time. So you'd have to put this in or it will not run a motor. That's why I say this is a heating mantle controller. If you want, there it is. Um, but you don't need that if you're only going to be using it to run these mantles. Make sure you use a fuse. Always use a fuse. Uh, a fast blow, 10 amp max in this, in this case here anyway because everything's rated to 15 amps or so. And 10 amps is plenty. 10 amps, if I ran through this thing, would blow this heating mantle in a minute. As you can see, I'm boiling water there at 2 amps. It'll boil water at 1 amp easily. This is pushing it for a speed. But 10 amps is more than enough. You don't need more than that. I can guarantee it. So, anyway, I just thought you would like to see that. And if anybody is interested, um, post a comment in the comment section and I can come around and I can make another one of these more in detail for anybody who is seriously interested, if I get enough interest on it that is, but that's my heating mantle, let me know what you think, comment, rate, subscribe.